Here is probably the shortest lesson that you'll get in terms of the series of factoring videos that I am presenting. And it is on something called grouping. So what is grouping? Grouping is a type of factoring that you could use, potentially, when common factoring is not available. That is, when you look at a series of terms in an expression and you can't find something that is common to all of them. Take a look at this example. Notice that we have four terms. However, there is not a value or a coefficient or a variable part that is common to all of them. So what do we do? Well, that's when you look at the next type of factoring in this video called grouping. What you can do in a sense is divide and conquer. So what if we looked at the question as two different parts? For example, what if we just saw half of the question? like this. Could you factor that? Sure you could. X is common to them. Or what if you looked at the second batch of terms? What if you looked at these guys here? Could you factor that? Well, you couldn't really take out much, but it is part of the uh, method. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at it in pairs and look at each of those pairs as a separate question. So temporarily, I want you to ignore this term here, or this series of uh, terms. In the first binomial, what is common? Well, they both share an x. And if you take the x out, you're left with y plus 3. All right, that's halfway done. What if we looked at just the second part? Okay, this part's a little weird, because they don't have anything in common. But you can always put a 1 when two terms have nothing in common. It's mathematically correct to put a 1 there because if you distribute the 1, 1 times y is y and 1 times 3 is still 3. So that's it. You kind of look at the question in two pieces. Take a look here now. There's actually two terms. This one and this one here. What do they have in common? Well, they both share a y plus 3. I'll put something on the side here as an analogy. If I said to you xA plus 1A, of course the 1 is a little bit redundant, but if I had that for you as a factoring question, what would you do in the previous video? Well, they have A in common, so you would take the A there, and you'd be left with x plus 1. Well, in this case, it's not A. It's an entire expression. It's this y plus 3. But still, because it's the same thing appearing twice, you can think of it as the, the quantity that is factorable on both of those terms. So I can take out that y plus 3 and put it in the front. And what would be left over? I want you to imagine the yellow stuff was invisible. If the yellow stuff was invisible, what would you have? You would have x plus 1. And that is the factored form for this question. This is grouping. So what are some features of grouping? You always see an even number of terms. So you could have four terms, six terms, eight terms, etc. I wouldn't put two terms because if you had two terms and there was something that could be factored, it would just be called a common factoring question. So. Let's take a look at a few more questions, four to be specific, and see how we can do these. Oh, no numbers. I guess uh, this makes the question hard. But really, when there's no numbers, there's less chances you're going to make a mistake dividing anyway. Let's take a look, see if we can find anything that's common to all of them. Well, I have AB here and AY and BX and X. It's just a mess. Like there's no variable that's common to all of them. And that is an indicator that potentially you might have to try grouping. So indeed, if we divide this question into two parts and look at them as separate factoring questions, we do see that grouping is possible. In the first pair of terms, A is common. And if you take the A out, you're left with b plus y. In the second pair of terms, we can take an x out. And what do you notice? When you take the x out, 
imagine those x's disappeared, you would have b plus y again. And that's it. The key thing here to see with grouping is that the same expression appears twice. It repeats itself. And if something repeats itself, then it's common because it's a pattern. And we can take out that expression, b plus y, and as the analogy I mentioned earlier, imagine that the yellow stuff is invisible. Well, then you would have an a plus x here. And that is the factored form for grouping. All right, here's another one. This time, we can again see that there is nothing that is common to all of them. So we can divide it into two parts and observe or factor each of those pairs separately. In this first pair of terms, we see that a C is common, and that leaves us with Y plus three. In the second pair of terms, there is a two and there is an x that's common. So we can take the 2x out and we can see that we have y plus three. If this one here slowed you down a bit and you weren't sure about your arithmetic or your algebra with the division out in the factoring step, I recommend that you go back to the previous video on common factors to brush up your skills. Here we go. The y plus three appears in both expressions, in both terms, which means that you can take it out as a common factor. And imagine now the yellow stuff was invisible and you can see that c plus two x is left over. Grouping is very useful on its own, but actually it can be the basis of a factoring method for a very special type of polynomial called a quadratic trinomial. And we are gonna do two videos after this where we talk about factoring those types of trinomials. The next two examples help us prepare for this type of situation. So this question and the next one is a, is a foundation for what I'll be doing in the next video. Let's work this out. Notice that in this expression, an x is not common to all the terms. However, we see that with an even number of terms, we can divide and conquer by grouping. In the first pair of terms, an x is common, leaving us with x plus 3. In the second pair of terms, a 4 is common, also leaving us with an x plus 3. Because the x plus 3 appears twice, and this time I'm not gonna use any colors, I'll just underline this quantity. Because this item here, this quantity x plus three appears the same way both times, that means that you've executed the grouping step correctly. And you can take out that x plus three, leaving you with x plus four. This is the factored form. How would you check this? Well, if you wanted to check it, you could distribute as I've mentioned a couple videos ago, or you can use what's called FOIL. Same thing, because a binomial times a binomial, it abides by the FOIL uh, idea. So, one more to go. Something similar to this one to help you prepare for the next lesson on the trinomial factoring. Again, here we have four terms. None of the terms share an X. And the only number that's common is a one. One doesn't really help you. So let's divide and conquer here by grouping. You can factor an X out of the first pair of terms, leaving you with X minus three. And in the second pair of terms, you can take out a five, also leaving you with X minus three. Again, all colors aside here, I'm gonna just underline the expression that appears twice which is x plus three. You can take out that x plus three and that leaves you with x plus five. This is the factored form for this expression. We're gonna move on to factoring trinomials now. But remember, what I've shown you here is the basis for the next type of factoring that I'll be displaying. Thank you.